So let's continue our discussions on implementing different matrix and uh, vector operations using Python. And one of the important topics that we discussed uh, previously in one of the lectures was eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So let's see how we can, you know, do eigenvalues and eigenvectors uh, using Python. In order to, you know, demonstrate uh, the utility of or the efficacy of eigenvalues and eigenvectors, I have chosen a specific problem. And this is a map coloring problem that I wanted to present. So the idea is, if you have a map of the United States and you want to color, you know, the adjacent states with, you know, uh, in a such a way that no neighboring states has same of the color. And if you do that, then hopefully you will have visual clarity in understanding the boundaries of the different states that is there. So the question here is, what is the minimum number of colors that we will need for us to essentially color, you know, uh, a map of US or for that matter, map of any countries like India, China, and so on that we are interested in, okay? Now, it turns out, you know, you can solve this problem by solving the eigenvalue problem of the adjacency matrix. And when we say that the adjacency matrix, what we are talking about is we will use a matrix and we'll create a matrix, right? which will store the adjacency information of the state. So if a state A is nearby and adjoining to another state, it will be represented as one, and, and if the state is not adjoining, then it will be represented as zero. So we can create an adjacency matrix, and using this matrix, we can represent the neighborhood of all the states in a given country. And the example that we are using here is US, and you know, so we will basically storing this adjacency matrix, which basically is representing the neighborhood of all the states, right? So which other states are neighboring of the current state, and that's what is represented in this adjacency matrix. And if we solve the eigenvalue problem of the adjacency matrix, that is a good indicator of the number of colors that we will be needing in order to color that map that is out there, okay? So again, in order to solve this problem, we will go through various different things. We will first of all read and arrange the data files in different manners, right? And the, this is a, we need to store this matrix and we need to do that. So we will talk about that. Then we will go ahead and identify the eigenvalues, right? Of the minimum possible. And that will help us in essentially finding out the minimum colors that will be needed. And then we will also show you once you find out how can you use, you can use other Python libraries to assign colors to the state and we can also plot the map in the four colors. So basically, we will go beyond a little bit beyond matrix operations and we will also show you some other functionalities in Python uh, which allows you to do some sort of network graphing and graph aspect of it and using that and connecting that with the, in, the problem that we are interested in doing. So the first step that we will be focusing on is essentially reading and arranging the data in the required manner that we have, okay? And what we are doing here is we are essentially storing, you know, the information that is needed for us to process this problem or to represent this problem and to bring to the Python will be stored in two different files, which is like state underscore position dot CSV, which is a, you know, comma separated uh, format file that is there. And then the state neighbor will be, the location of the state neighbors will be stored in the state neighbors dot txt files. And this file essentially has the information regarding adjacent state for each state. Now, when, when we are, you know, using Google Colab, what we need to do is we might be storing these files locally somewhere in our hard drive. What we need to do is using this upload, file upload right here, the, what we are showing in the left hand side, uh, we will click on this orange highlighted folder segment, and then we will click this upload section, right? The, you know, what you have in the top, just below the files, this upload icon. And if you upload that, that will allow you to upload files from local hard drive and connect that file with the code segment that you're implementing or the, you know, notebook that you have. So as you can see here, I have multiple different files like sample underscore data, car underscore image, state underscore position dot CSP and state underscore neighbors dot TXT. These are the files that I have locally uploaded now here in the collab. And once I have done that, for this problem, I will be needing essentially the state underscore positions dot CSP and state underscore neighbors dot TXTs. Those will be two files. So I have uploaded here, and once we upload it here, the you know Google Collab will be able to you know basically uh, call those files 
and extract relevant data that will be needed for us to solve the problem that we have discussed. So I will close this and again, uh, you know, uh, how do you upload a file? You click on this folder, right, right here. You click on this folder icon, okay? And then you, you know, maybe if you click this uh, icon right here, uh, this gives you the photo library to your choose files. So you go to the choose files and that will allow you to choose files and upload the files. And those uploaded files will be connected and then you can execute the Google Colab directory. So if you're interested in calling something that is stored locally uh, into Python, this will be the approach that you will follow. So let me close this and we let's go back to the problem. So for this problem, as I mentioned, I have essentially uploaded these two files from my local drive, which is state underscore position dot CSV and state underscore neighbors dot TXT. And it essentially have information about the coordinates of each of the states and also regarding the adjacent state for the each of the state, right? So the next block that you see here is essentially about reading the data from these two, you know, uh, included files that we have and representing them in the form of matrices and so on. Okay, so what we see is we are now using pandas and as I've described in the first Python lecture, first module, that Python, Python pandas is like very, very important for, for you, for, you know, data processing and so on. So we will be essentially using the panda library uh, uh, to import the data from the CSV and the text files that are there, okay? And then in order to carry out the operations, we'll be using the NumPy. So that's why you can see that we have imported both the panda library and the NumPy here. And then we have a set of codes. So this codes basically stores the nodes underscore position, which is basically the position of each of the states. And then it also scores, you know, if you go back, if you go down here, it also, there is a second uh, uh, line which is basically storing the, all the adjacent locations, right? So the state underscore neighbor dot text has the neighborhood, uh, neighborhood information about each of the steps, uh, st um, each of the states. And we are basically calling that and we are storing that in the variable that is out there, okay? So what we have done here in the step one is basically in this code block that we define the reading of the data files and arranging and storing them in the required format uh, using pandas, right? So we are basically using pandas, and right? And so, so let me execute this block of code. And so that will help us in basically, you know, storing what we need for the further processes. Mm -hmm.